Call the meeting in order for the Urban Renewal Authority. Have a roll call, please. Councilmember Dennehy? Here. Councilmember Gonzalez? Absent. Councilmember Grantham? Here. Councilmember Jaquez? Here. Councilmember Hamrick? Here. And I'm, I apologize. Commissioner Reed? Here. Commissioner Reeser? Absent. Commissioner A. Smith? Absent. Commissioner B. Smith? Here. Chairman Payne? Here. I would uh, ask everybody to stand at the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. this time I would uh, ask if there's any citizens that would re request to speak to the Urban Renewal Authority on matters not on the agenda. I see the only one out there shaking her head vigorously no, okay. <laughs> Move on to the consent agenda. Item A is approval of minutes of the Urban Renewal Authority meetings on April 7th, 2021. Entertain a motion. Chairman Payne, we can actually do it and the receive and file list of bills all together if you'd like. Oh yeah, since it's a consent agenda. So they, they can be done together, they, they don't have to be done separate. They don't have to be done separate? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, so item B is receive a file list of the bills. Not a whole lot. Nope. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Dennehy? Aye. Commissioner Grantham? Aye. Commissioner Jaquez? Aye. Commissioner Hamrick? Aye. Commissioner Reed? Aye. Commissioner B. Smith? Aye. Chairman Payne? Aye. Move on to item four, it's the financial report. Treasurer's not here. Nothing to report on the financial report? Uh, we will uh, we'll have a financial report for the next meeting. There have been very few transactions, uh, mostly just the uh, sanitation sewer line uh, work that we did over at Skyline Steel, as well as the bill that is in the list of bills today. Okay, so do we want to hold off till next meeting or do we want to go ahead and approve it now? Uh, you can hold off until next meeting. Okay, we'll do that. Item five, the executive director report. All right. Um, we have uh, met with uh, the Holiday Inn Express and uh, negotiated an agreement. We'll be, uh, wor we're working on drafting that agreement and that will be coming before the board at the next meeting. And then uh, uh, Rick is also working on the TZAC project to, to work on that agreement. So uh, we may have a couple of agreements uh, at the next meeting. Um, the, uh, we, I had sent out an email uh, regarding a work session uh, that we were trying to schedule. I only heard back from a couple of people, so we, we have not scheduled that yet. So we're probably gonna work to, to schedule that a couple more weeks out, so. Uh, we'll get some dates again from the consultants and I'll send out another um, reminder or email to ask about availability. Okay, so we'll give it another try. Yep. All right, anything else? That is all I have for today. Okay. Item six for discussion, introduce, introduction and adoption by title only of resolution one series of 2021 entitled a resolution of the Kane City Area for Reinvestment Expansion approving the Kane City Area for Reinvestment Expansion Vacate Improvement Grant Program. So I'll ask Ryan to explain that. 
Yeah, so this is the facade improvement grant. Uh, previously, this was a program that we offered uh, under the city through the general fund. Uh, part of the uh, funds that we had uh, transferred over from the uh, city to the urban renewals to continue these programs, but uh, to house them under the urban renewal authority. And uh, Rick, uh, you know, he helped uh, transfer all this and actually did most of the work on it. So. Rick, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to say about this program. Uh, no, we, we it was modified a little bit to to um, account for the urban renewal area. It's still really with a preference on historic buildings, but it, 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 it does spread out now to the urban renewal area. So if businesses have facade improvements they want to make, it would be a $2,000 contribution, uh, and they would have to pay the rest of whatever that would be. Uh, it's been used at Pizza Madness, Pizza Madness and the adjacent buildings, the, the, on, the awnings they have there. It was used for that. Uh, Fremont Provisions, that black and white awning that they've got out there. We've got two businesses right now that are interested in, in applying for the grant and have applied for the grant for facade improvements to their buildings on Main Street. So it's, it's a 50-50 match, and we'll match up to $2,000. So if it's a $4,000 project, we'll cover half of that. And with the funding, there's a significant possibility of businesses to use it for dressing up, dressing up their businesses, base, basically. We've got a pretty significant, um, I guess you could pay, say a pretty significant bank account, so to speak, budget for this item. So a lot of businesses, if they want to do some improvements, they'll get, if they apply for it and they're approved, they'll get some assistance. Okay, so it's capped at 2,000. If the, the project is 5,000, 6,000, whatever the case may be, we're still capped at 2,000? Correct. Okay. Correct. And if it's a building that has two addresses, which is very common, and there's two businesses in there, those two businesses can apply for that grant. Or if there's, uh, or one of the businesses and an owner of a building can apply for that grant. So the whole idea is that kind of per business, there's a $2,000 grant per business. Okay. So. Any questions or comments? So the, um, I guess this is kind of a question for both of these grant programs, this is effectively taking it down and limiting it to the URA area, just it, transferring the, the grants over into the C-Care. Correct. Um, I guess, it, just a curiosity, is it limiting anybody outside of that URA? I mean, obviously they probably would have already taken care of this prior to moving this if they were going to take advantage of either one of these grants, if they're outside of the current URA. That made no sense, I can see it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> if you, well, you're asking if businesses outside the urban renewal would, have, would qualify, or urban renewal area, I'm, that's the way not, I'm Not after we pass these resolutions. So, so uh, when we did the budget for 2021, uh, we budgeted this way, so we do not have any uh, of these funds currently coming through the city. So this is, th this would be new as of 2021 gotcha. for the Urban Renewal Authority. Okay, okay. And that was my next set of questions. So, thank you. Commissioner Hammer. So uh, I would just say uh, to Commissioner Grantham, the the current area for funding uh, uh, by via the city for these two funds, the facade and life grant, is much smaller than the Urban Renewal Authority area. So actually, this will be expanding the area where these funds would be available. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. also answers the question. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Anything else, Ryan? Uh, that is it in regards to Resolution 1. Okay. I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman and Commission, I move to approve Resolution 1, Series of 2021. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Dennehy? Aye. Commissioner Grantham? Aye. Commissioner Jaquez? Aye. Commissioner Hamrick? Aye. Commissioner Reed? Aye. Commissioner B. Smith? Aye. Chairman Payne? Aye. Thank you.
move on to item B. This introduction and adoption by title only of resolution two, series of 2021, entitled a resolution of the Kansas City area for reinvestment expansion, approving the Kansas City area for reinvestment expansion downtown life safety grant program. And I'll have the executive director explain that one. And again, this is a grant program that we're transferring from the city to the urban renewal authority. Uh, it is specifically for the purpose of enhancing life safety. And uh, this one, uh, we're not expanding the area on. This was uh, originally designed for the central business district to help building owners and businesses that want to go into historic buildings. And there are barriers to, to doing that uh, specifically when it comes to life safety. We've had uh, several instances over the years where uh, we've tried to reuse or repurpose buildings and uh, because there's a change of use uh, that, that tends to happen with the reuse of a building or repurposing of a building, uh, that throws in a lot of requirements. And, and some of those requirements uh, specifically that we've run into have come from the fire district regarding sprinkling buildings. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really where this, pro where this program originated, was trying to help reuse, uh, at the time it was Skyline Theater, uh, uh, to make it from a, a um, movie theater into a live action theater uh, where the performances could take place. Um, we've seen a lot of interest in this. Uh, you, you see it and you, we have actually an application for this uh, later on in the agenda where a restaurant may want to expand into uh, two storefronts instead of one uh, because of the square footage uh, that causes the occupant load to go up and that, uh, that increase in occupant load triggers the requirement for a sprinkler system. Um, and you know, with uh, some of these older buildings uh, putting in these sprinkler systems, you're talking uh, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 to 125 or more thousands of dollars. And uh, this program was designed to help uh, alleviate some of that burden to create commercial activity uh, within the main streets uh, commercial core of the central business district. Uh, this program uh, will match up to $50,000 and it's, uh, we'll, uh, we'll cover up to 75% or $50,000. Rick, anything you want to add to that? No, that was perfect. Uh, you'll notice on the, on the memo that it says that did the attorney's review. I worked on the, on the changes for this, for C-Care with Catherine. So she, she and I were back and forth with this. I just had to get this to Cindy for your packet, so I didn't get the final review from the attorneys. So it's probably 99.999% okay. <laughs> we did a lot of back and forth. We so. did a lot of back and forth. What, uh, what do we have budgeted for this, or do we have a budget for this within that 500000 the the total the total budget authority we have for this program is a hundred thousand dollars. So if we have two significant projects, you're looking at using all of the budget authority for a year. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Ryan? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair and Commission, I move uh, to adopt Resolution 2, Series of 2021 by title only. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Dennehy? Aye. Commissioner Grantham? Aye. Commissioner Jaquez? Aye. Commissioner Hamrick? Aye. Commissioner Reed? Aye. Commissioner B. Smith? Aye. Chairman Payne? Aye. We move on to item C which it's a good thing we passed item B or else this would have been a moot point. World's End Brewing Life Safety Grant Application. Ryan, I have you explain and this. Yeah, one. we'll have a presentation from Rick on this. Yeah, this, this project started um, actually before this was transferred into C-Care. Um, the, the business at 401 Main Street, um, World's End Brewing, had the exact scenario that Ryan was talking about before. They, they because of COVID, had to limit their um, occupancy like any other business. They took advantage of the possibilities of, of using patio seating, and they had, they'd begun that before COVID. 
but they expanded that and they wanted to expand more. The challenge they had is that they were they were being very they were being very good, very religious, I guess you could say, with the COVID requirements, and um, seeing a lot of demand for people to come in their restaurants. They were turning people away. And um, Tom Martinez, the owner, was interested anyway in moving next door, expanding his restaurant next door. So he began that process, and um, we got into the conversations about occupancy, about egress, and he needs to put in a sprinkler system because of occupancy. He was given, um, COVID caused some other complications. You'll notice that in here you can see on one of his bills that there's a check number. If you read the regulation, if you read the rule, rules, you're not supposed to begin any construction prior to approval of the grant. Um, because it was taking him months to get fire suppression system, fire sprinkler system estimates, to get multiple estimates, uh, we gave him permission to put in some, to put in the ceiling that he needed to have for the sprinkler system in order for him to open up. So the fire department, fire district gave him uh, pretty much a temporary occupancy as long as he would continue through the process of putting in the sprinkler system. So the city, uh, author we allowed him to do that. Uh, we, we talked about it in a review session with the planning, or excuse me, with the building official, the fire district, and agreed that that was a good thing to do. So we're taking things a little out of order in this project because of COVID and the timing of estimates. Um, he's, he was still only able to get one estimate from a sprinkler company. So it was a little complicated. But he's, he's applied for um, 50, just, just above $52,000. He knew that there was a cap of $50,000. And uh, the review committee went through the application. And you see the, re you see the letter in your packet that was my letter to him after the review. Um, it was a unanimous decision. There was no, really no great discussion except that he needed to make sure that he had the licenses in place, insurance in place, and everything else. And those requirements really are for payment. Um, we need to make, he needs to make sure that he uses licensed contractors basically and goes through all of the requirements of the building official or building department and the fire department um, before he can get payment. So this is his application. $50,000, he's expanding into 403 Maine. He will eventually buy the building, uh, but he, he is not ready to do that yet. The owner of the building did sign on the, uh, sign on or sign off on the agreement to, to do this project. Um, so he's, he's got part of it in the process, but now he's just waiting for the sprinkler system to be put in and that'll be, he's looking hopefully June he still doesn't have a firm date on when that's going to happen. But um, that's, that's, that's what this application is all about, and it should help him expand considerably. And, and I should add, too, that when, when we talk about having to put in a sprinkler system, that was still only at 25% capacity for his business. So even expanding off into the, next, into the space next door, even at COVID, restrictions, he still had to put in a sprinkler system. But uh, it made sense because he wanted to be there anyway. So, you know, but this is his application for $50,000. So, but this is also is, is uh, look for an eye in the future too, I am assuming, past the 25%. I mean, right, right. All this opens yeah. up. Yeah, this will make it, this will make it full access, full, full occupancy when we are 100%, which we Okay, so he is the. It's fifty three thousand one forty eight. The three thousand one forty eight. He's just going to eat that one in in the applications for fifty thousand. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioner Reed? How much longer is on his lease? I understand his intention is to buy, but I was just curious. Um. If you knew. I think he's got a couple of years. He's got more of a, um, like a three to five year plan, I think, to buy the building, okay. I believe. I was just making sure because ultimately at the end of the day, the building owner, this is going to increase our property value. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is great, but I wanna make sure that we're doing it for the purpose that it's intended for, which is for the restaurant to be able to continue. So I just wanted to make sure I understood that portion. So. Yeah, that's correct, yes. It increase, increase the ability for him to serve the community, basically, is what it's for. Yep. So how much is he putting into this? Uh, he's got, mm, well, we cover up to 75%, so he's putting another, what's our total here? 36, 25, I guess I didn't total those columns. It's almost $70,000. Yeah, it's almost $70,000. Okay. Commissioner Hammer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The, I would just like to note that uh, at, a, at a different day and a different time uh, and with different staff and on the council side of the ledger, uh, we had been previously told by staff, uh, if you put it in an in a, um, ordinance, we're gonna follow the ordinance to the letter of the law. And council was not happy uh, with, that, with that answer uh, and things have changed. Uh, I am I'm very happy to see staff working with our business owners to uh, allow the flexibility uh, that is often needed in a situation such as this uh, where there are, there, there are extenuating circumstances. Uh, there's, there's also a, a kind of a caveat there too, and that caveat is that, that communication is really important uh, on, on these issues uh, so, that, so that staff and in this case, the commission all stay on the same page as to expectations for, for um, operators and owners and uh, navigating sometimes, the, not in this case, but uh, what can be um, perceived as Byzantine regulations. So, but kudos to staff for, for working with this business owner on that and, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other further questions, comments? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Mr. Hammer. I move that the commission approve and authorize the chairman's signature on a downtown life safety grant application for World's End Brewery. Capped at $50,000. Capped at $50,000 as presented. All right. Second. We have a second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Dennehy? Aye. Commissioner Grantham? Aye. Commissioner Jaquez? Aye. Commissioner Hamrick? Aye. Commissioner Reed? Aye. Commissioner B. Smith? Aye. Chairman Payne? Aye. Anybody have anything else, anything to discuss? Notice my shirt is the uh, yard I went to the ribbon cutting this afternoon, and so I'm multitasking, which is unusual for me at this stage of my life. Looks like that could be your St. Patrick's Day shirt, too. <laughs> With no further business coming before this board, we are adjourned. <laughs>